This is a bizarre robbery and murder case. A masked robber broke into a convenience store and shot and killed the owner and a female customer on the spot. But strangely enough, the robber only took $30. Would anyone kill two people for $30? What's even stranger is that the surveillance video of the convenience store showed that after the murder left, a male customer entered the store and gave simple first aid to the woman who had been shot in the head. He called the ambulance and the police. However, when the police tried to interview the male customer, they found no way to find this person. And after the male customer entered the convenience store, he deliberately did not let the surveillance camera to capture his face. The police had a suspicion. This male customer was the masked robber. But why did he turn back to help after killing someone? David was an FBI agent who solved numerous crimes. After he retired, he still couldn't stay idle. He became a private detective. In recent years, David's been working with the police. They were working with a serial killer. This killer is very cunning and arrogant. After each kill, he would leave a number code. He would also leave a special message and provocative words for David. The elderly David was always at his wit's end. Late at night, the police called the code killer again. When David arrived at the scene, he noticed a man in the crowd who was acting suspiciously. He appeared to have blood on his shoes, although he couldn't see his face. But David had a hunch that this man was the cryptographer. He was ready to catch him. He sensed something was wrong. He started to run. David followed him. But when he reached an alley, David suddenly had a heart attack and collapsed to the ground. He shot the man several times to fight the pain, although he wounded the man. But he let him get away. His heart attack was the end of David's career. Due to the severity of his condition, he had to undergo a heart transplant. David's blood type is very specific. It was difficult to match him with a suitable organ donor. So on the advice of his doctors, David was treated conservatively in the hospital for two years. Until two years later, the hospital was able to find a heart match and perform heart surgery on him. The surgery was very successful. Two months later, David recovered well and was allowed to go home to recuperate by his treating doctor. He was ready to start a leisurely retirement. And that's when a strange woman, who called herself Anna, approached him out of the blue. She wanted David to help her track down the truth about her sister's murder. It turns out that two months earlier, Anna's sister Mary was shopping at a convenience store when she was robbed. Mary was shot in the head and died. The police have not yet been able to catch the killer and coincidentally, David's heart, which was surgically mashed a month ago, came from the murdered Mary. David didn't want to get involved in criminal cases, but his heart came from this victim. To repay the favor, he agreed to Anna's request, considering his own physical condition. He had difficulty adapting to high-risk work. David also hired his neighbor, Sam, to be his assistant and driver. David finally commissioned a former colleague of the FBI to get the surveillance video and related information of Mary's murder. As we mentioned earlier, the mass killer shot the convenience store owner and Mary in the head, but he only took $30 in cash after. A male customer entered the store and only gave Mary a brief first aid to stop the bleeding. He called the ambulance and the police. Since the male customer disappeared after calling the police. In addition, he entered the store and avoided the security cameras. The police thus suspected that the male customer was the murderer. But why did he try to help after the murder? In addition, Mary was already brain dead when she was taken to the hospital because she had signed an organ donation agreement before she died. David, who was waiting for surgery, was matched with a suitable heart. David carefully reviewed the information and video of the crime. He had a general judgment. The killer only took $30 after the murder. Obviously not reasonable. It was more like a pure murder than a robbery. This is more like a pure murder case. In addition, the killer's method of operation was very clean. He didn't leave any fingerprints or other evidence at the scene. He didn't look like a first-time offender at all. David suspected this could be a serial murder. With the help of a former FBI colleague, David did find another similar robbery and murder. This one happened two weeks before Mary was killed. The victim's name was David. He was shot and killed by a masked robber while withdrawing money from an ATM. He was also shot in the head. A man named Henry was the reporting party. According to Henry's testimony, when he found David, he was still alive despite having been shot in the head. Henry called the ambulance at first. Strangely enough, the hospital ambulance ran to the wrong location and delayed the emergency so that David died on the way to the hospital. David compared the information of the two robberies. Mary and David were both shot in the head and did not die on 
the spot. In addition, from the surveillance video can be seen. The robbers in both cases were similar in stature. The killing method is also very similar, and the murderer used the same type of handgun. In other words, these two cases are likely to be serial killings. If the murderer is the same person, then between the two victims, there should be some kind of common features. Following this line of thought, David, with the help of his assistant Sam, soon found out what Mary and David had in common. That is, they both had the same rare blood type, and they were both organ donors. David suddenly realized the murderer's motive was not robbery at all. He was trying to get the victim's organs. The autopsy reports from the FBI on David and Mary confirmed David's suspicions. Both of them were brain dead due to the bullet piercing the anterior brain fluid. The other organs in the brain dead patient's body still had blood circulation for transplantation. It's just that as a rule, organ donors' information is kept strictly confidential. Even the donor's family and the recipient themselves do not know. Previously, Anna also went to great lengths to check her sister's blood type and time of death as well as David's blood type and date of surgery before assuming that her sister's heart was replaced with David's. Then the question arises, how did the killer know in advance that Mary and David were organ donors? The more plausible explanation is, the killer is either a medical worker who has access to this information, or he's a computer whiz. He hacked into the hospital's computer system to find out the list of donors. Based on this theory, David quickly identified a suspect. This person was Henry, the person who reported David's murder. If Henry was the killer, a lot of suspicions can be reasonably explained. First of all, Henry is a computer expert. He has the ability to easily hack into the hospital computer system to obtain the donor's information. Secondly, Henry's target may have been David alone. After hitting David in the head, he disguised himself as an eyewitness. He made the first ambulance call in order to get David, who was brain dead, to the hospital so that his organs would be kept alive. The hospital ambulance driver was in the wrong place. He delayed the ambulance. David died on the way to the hospital. David's organs naturally failed to meet the medical standards. So, Henry made Mary his next target. After the murder, he once again played the role of a witness. Just to be sure, Henry also gave Mary a brief first aid treatment. Because of his appearance in the murder of David, he had given an eyewitness account. So this time, Henry deliberately avoided the convenience store cameras. He disappeared after calling the police. David then informed his former colleagues at the FBI of his theory. Because of his heart condition, David took his assistant Sam home first. He left the job of catching the suspect entirely to the FBI. The next day, the FBI found Henry's body near the alley, where David had a heart attack while chasing the coded killer. He had also been shot in the head. A series of numbers were left at the scene of the murder, as well as a note verbalizing and provoking David. David suddenly realizes that the cryptographer he has been tracking for years is back, and his previous deductions had gone horribly wrong. The data show Henry himself and his family and friends were in perfect health. No one needed an organ transplant, which means Henry had no motive to kill, and the cryptographer killed David and Mary in order to save David's life. After years of playing Ken and Mouse with David, the cryptographer was too intoxicated to stop playing the game. He wanted to cure David's heart disease and keep the game going. He first coerced Henry, a computer expert, into hacking into the hospital system. They found an organ donor with David's blood type match. The reason for the killer's strange series of actions after the murder was to keep the victim's heart to meet the transplant criteria. As for Henry's death, it was clearly an attempt to silence the killer. After figuring all this out, David felt a lot of guilt. He felt that he had killed David and Mary, and the innocent convenience store owner, to apologize. David told Anna everything. Not only did Anna, who had a clear sense of justice, not blame David, she also brought Mary's son to visit with her. Mary's son overheard the briefing about the coded killer and the new miracle code he left at the murder scene. This simple-minded little boy found the secret right away. The number code contained 0 to 3 for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but not one. David was inspired by the boy's discovery. He suddenly thought of a person. This person is his neighbor. In the past few days, David hired Boudi as his driver and assistant. In order to pay his salary, he had asked for the other man's bank account number. In retrospect, Boudi's account number contained almost all the single digits without the number one. And his full name hides the word no one, which can be broken down to form two words. So that's it. David finally realized in hindsight, all these years he had been overthinking the problem. The mysterious code killer. In fact, has been lurking around him waiting for him to discover the secret. This is the most exciting game. After thinking it all through, David confronted Budi face to face with his pistol. Budi confessed that he was the cryptographer. 
he proudly asked David, how does the new heart work? It was a gift he had carefully chosen for David. Angry, David doesn't want to hear another word from this psychopath. He just shot him dead. After the murderer dies, David finally lives a life of leisurely retirement.